hello dear friends welcome to my youtube channel mukesh english this is mukesh soni in this video we are going to have a discussion of a famous play title purpose written by tp kalasam tyagraj param siva ayer kalasam who was born in 1884 and passed away in 1946 he was a playwright and prominent writer of kannada literature his contribution to kannada theatrical comedy earned him the title parahasana prahasana prapitamaha that means the father of humorous plays and later and later he was also called as kannada ke obbana kelasam that means one and only kelasam of for kannada about the play the purpose the play purpose by tp kelasam is a story based on adi parva the mahabharata moving around eklavya and arjuna and their purpose behind learning archery the play dramatizes the events that occurred in the mahabharat involving drona arjuna and eklavya kelasam the playwright has dealt with the caste conflict of the society of his time unfolding the youthful idealism of eklavya hence the marginal character of mahabharata is furnished in a very convincing manner by the playwright that eklavya can be considered as the central character of the play there are four important characters bhishma the patriarch of the royal kuru house arjuna nakula sadeva bhishma's grandchildren dronacharya perceptor preceptor to the princes guru of the princes eklavya a nishad boy non aryan and the time it belongs to adi parva of the mahabharata now the act 1 begins one day as drona is training arjuna eklavya comes out of the forest and observes them from a distance when drona looks very busy eklavya approaches him and asks for permission to learn archery drona does not refuse the boy nor scorn him drona wholeheartedly wishes to help eklavya fulfill his goal eklavya lives in a hut in the center of a great forest near his house there are many fawns the dees there are many fawns that he and his mother care for and occasionally feed them however there are an there are an abundance of wolves in that region of the forest and they continuously hunt down and eat his fawns it is the purpose that he would like to master the skill of archery he would like to save his fawns from the hands of the wolves so that he would like to have a mastery over the skills of archery drona is utterly persuaded persuaded convinced by the boy's selflessness and he says of course he is who doesn't love fawns they are so cute look at this guy at this point in the play drona considers eklavya as his pupil unfortunately drona's other pupil that is arjun he gets into a small fight with eklavya and insults eklavya's caste telling him that eklavya is low born and hence he is unable to ever compete with somebody of his own level so we find here casteism drona is thoroughly impressed by this volley of ideas in e- and is even more willing to take on eklavya than before so he has decided that he will make eklavya as his pupil however arjun remembers something that he can twist to his advantage drona had promised arjun that he would make him the greatest archer in the world yet still arjun and eklavya continue to bicker and fight eklavya reminds that according to guru there are only five requirements to become a good archer so eklavya reminds arjuna the five important prerequisites important requirement to become a good archer and these five requirements are number 1 a perfect mastery of the ground work of archery number 2 a power to concentrate number 3 a deep and fervent love for one's guru number 4 the guru's wholehearted agreement to teach number 5 
tireless practice, hard work. So these are the five important key prerequisite or the requirements to become a good archer according to Eklavya. Eklavya mentions that nowhere in these criteria caste is mentioned. Hence, he should have, he should have an equal opportunity through the course of the argument, we see that Eklavya genuinely believes that the Guru will side with him. The Guru Dronacharya will definitely favor him. Unfortunately, after Arjun invoking his promise, the honor-bound Guru has no choice but to turn Eklavya away. Eklavya is heartbroken. Heart, heart broken. Before he leaves, However, he asked the Guru one thing. Eklavya asked Guru Dronacharya one thing. He says, If you had had the time, sir, and were free to teach me, sir, would you have liked the least bit like to teach me? Drona, Drona with his hands resting on Eklavya's shoulder, bends down and speaks in a tone of utmost love and admiration. He says, Liked? The least bit liked? Why, my little man? If only I had the least chance, I should love to teach you. Eklavya cunningly manipulates the Guru into saying this. What Eklavya means to say that he has now satisfied the fourth criteria required to become a proficient bowman. As he possesses all the others, there is nothing that can stop him. He thanks the Guru. He leaves and the act one ends here. Act two begins. The act two begins six years later, with Drona and Arjuna wandering through the wandering through the forest and talking. Suddenly, they see a wolf running out from a nearby bush, screaming with at least thirty arrows through its skull. Drona and Arjuna stand spellbound by this insanely awesome feat of archery. As the archer comes running in pursuit, they recognize him as Eklavya. They are shocked to see that, is this Eklavya who has done this task? Arjun gets pissed as after witnessing Eklavya's mad archery. There is no way that he is the greatest archer alive. Hence, he calls Drona a liar. Eklavya gets angry. This repeats itself several times and eventually they start talking things out. Eklavya reveals that his guru is the great Drona. Drona denies this vehemently, saying that he had not trained anyone rather than Arjuna. Eklavya beckons them to follow him to his shrine nearby. He takes Drona and Arjuna to his hut Upon reaching, they see a life-sized clay statue of Drona sitting cross-legged on a shrine under the shade of a tree. Eklava says that he has learned from this statue. Arjun is unable to understand this, takes out his anger on Drona. Drona helplessly responds that he too had no idea of these happenings. But Arjun won't quit. He mocks Drona. He makes fun of Drona, telling him that the world will know him as a liar who did not abide by his promise to the king. Eklavya is crestfallen. He is very disappointed. He cannot believe that his training may be the downfall of the great Dronacharya. He could not tolerate the insult of his guru. Drona is equally perplexed as to, as to how his, his pupil, Eklavya, could have learned more than he himself knows. So, to this, Eklavya responds. Eklavya says, A pupil can learn more from his guru than what the guru himself knows if the purpose of the pupil for learning is nobler than what the purpose of the guru's was when, the, when he learned from his guru. So he mentions the importance of purpose of learning. I repeat, in the words of Eklavya, a pupil can learn more, than, more from his guru than what the guru himself knows if 
the purpose of the pupil for learning is nobler than what the purpose of the gurus was when he learnt from his guru. Drona is now feeling confused and guilty. He couldn't deny that he had failed to deliver on his promise to Arjun, but at the same time, he had no idea that Eklavya had been training under him. Drona knows that he is trapped. He knows that there is no way that Arjun can ever become a greater bowman than Eklavya. Drona says that it is not just the efforts given by the teacher that counts. It is equally the effort given by the pupil to learn. In this respect, he feels that Arjun can never become greater. But see that what Eklavya says. Eklavya continues to insist that with the proper training, Arjun could still easily become the best archer. Drona shakes his head and gives the following important dialogues, which reflects the significance of the title. Drona says, You do not know all, little man. It is not only love and respect for the Guru that counts. What counts? The purpose, the main purpose with which the pupil learns decides how much he learns. You have said it yourself a while ago with his purpose, Arjun's purpose for learning, for beneath yours. All his efforts and mind to help him even to equal you will not avail. So his purpose from the very outset has been to acquire personal fame as an archer. Whose purpose? Arjun's. To be acclaimed the greatest archer of all times and with you working body and soul, heart and mind to free harmless creatures from fear of marauding beast, the hardest of his efforts will not land him within yojanas of your archery and I shall never keep the promise I rashly made. So he says that what Drona says here, what matters a lot not love and respect for the Guru. What matters? The purpose matters. So he differentiates the purpose of Arjuna and the purpose of Eklavya. He says that Arjun's purpose was to get a fame, the name, to become the archer. But Eklavya's purpose was here to save his fawns, his D from the from from the from the wolves. So he has put his heart and soul his mind, his body and soul to learn archery. Eklavya is overwhelmed with his guilt. He feels terrible about the fact that he was the cause of all of this. He feels that because of him, his guru, Dronachare, has got insulted. He offers to never draw his bow again, but Arjuna is not satisfied. Arjun continues to enrage Eklavya by provoking him and insulting Drona. Caught up in a fit of rage, anger, Eklavya walks over the image of Drona, cuts his right thumb as blood gushes from the severed finger. Drona is aghast, deeply shocked. He had never, ex he, he had never expected this, much less wanted it. Eklavya tells him that this is his Guru Dakshina as Arjun looks on shocked. As Eklavya's rage dies down, he is suddenly overcome with a sense of grief. He remembers his fawns, his deeds, the purpose of his entire endeavor. What is his purpose? To save his fawns from the wolves. Now he's remembering, oh my God, what have I done? He had just destroyed his purpose. His purpose was to master the archery so that he could save his fawns from the wolves. But now he cannot because he has cut his thumb. He had just destroyed his purpose. Covered in blood and tears, Eklavya weeps, surrounded by his fawns. In a feat of rage at Drona's allowed, Drona has allowed him to do this. He rushes towards the statue and abuses it. Who? Drona. He goes towards the statue 
because he feels himself that he's the reason for this he's about to he's about to smash it when he's suddenly overwhelmed with a sense of remorse he mutters what have i almost done sinks back to the floor the play ends with him whimpering the following lines hopelessly to himself eklavya says forgive me guruji i did not know what i was doing but yet how could you how could you how could you this is the play purpose where there's a purpose of giving dakshina as well as there's also purpose of receiving the dakshina dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukesh english at the rate of gmail.com please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again